So let's uh, think about how CDs and DVDs work. We're going to be really oversimplifying, but just to get the basic idea of how uh, CDs and DVDs work. So let's say over here we have, say, the disc. Barrier. Here we have the slit. And here we have a screen or detector. Now, um, what, what is a CD or DVD? You know that those are ways of storing information, right? But how exactly is the information stored? It's stored in pits or depressions. Now, the, the pits and depressions are so small, you can't see them just by looking at it. But if you could magnify it enough, you would see that um, the, the, this, what looks like a smooth surface is really covered with all these little pits and depressions. So there's a whole series of pits and depressions on the disk. Okay, all right, and then we have um, light or electromagnetic radiation <coughs> that strikes the disk and then bounces off. So the light comes in and then it comes off. Uh, but I'm only going to draw the light that's coming off because that's all we care about. So I'll draw the light that's been reflected here. So here's some light that's been reflected from this pit. It goes through this slit. And then it's going to hit the detector of your CD player or your DVD player. So here's the detector. And the detector receives this light, and that tells, us a, it, tells it about the information in the pit. Again, we're really oversimplifying, but um, when the light hits the detector over here, it tells it about the information in this pit. So here's the detector that's receiving this reflected light. Um, so the light is coming off of here. Again, to be realistic, you should first draw the light coming in and then bouncing off. But what we care about is the light that comes this way. Okay, now, um, what about, say, the light that bounces off this pit? We might have some light that bounces off this pit and comes and forms, say, a spot over here on the detector. All right, and then the detector says, aha, this is the light, um, so we might call this pit one and pit two. And the detector would say to itself, aha, this is the information from pit two, and this is the information from pit one. Mm -hmm. All right, now, this is the way the world would work if light was made out of particles. If light was made out of particles, that it, um, then the screen over here would know for sure that this light is coming from pit one, and that this light is coming from pit two. So it would know for sure that all the information in this spot is from pit two, and the information in this spot is from pit one. All right, but now let's see what happens when we take into account that light is really waves, not particles. Well, let's erase one of these lines here. What's the effect of it being a wave? Well, the effect of it being a wave is, remember, the light from this pit, let's just focus on the light from this pit, this light is not only going to form a spot here. We know from our whole bit on diffraction that actually we're going to get a whole bunch of bright spots from this pit. Our whole um, session when we talked about diffraction shows us that actually when the light goes through this slit, um, eventually when it hits the screen, we're going to get a whole series of bright spots. spots from pit one. I'm ignoring the other pits for a second. We know from diffraction that when light goes through a slit, it ends up giving a whole series of spots. If it was a particle, it would just go straight ahead. But we know that waves spread out when they go through a uh, barrier, and they're going to end up hitting the, spot, um, hitting the screen in many different places and giving us many different uh, spots. Let me give you a brief reminder of why that is. Remember that we could treat every point in this slit as a new point source of the wave. We could treat every point in this slit as a new point source, according to Vegan's principle. 
Um, well, then um, sometimes those different point sources are going to interfere constructively on the screen, and sometimes those point sources are going to interfere destructively on the screen. Well, every time they interfere constructively, we get a bright spot, <clears throat> and every time they interfere destructively, we get a dark spot. Okay. Anyway, we know that because this is a wave, it doesn't just give one spot. It gives a whole series of spots. That's the idea of diffraction interference. But now you can see the challenge for the DVD player. Now, when it looks at the spot, it doesn't know, is this coming from pit one or pit two? Now, all right, it doesn't know, is this the information from pit one or from pit two? It would be nice if the light was just a particle and just went to one place. Can you, can you just read the one that's brightest? Read the one that's so that that the brightest one is coming from. Oh, yeah. OK, that, that let's, uh, as we proceed, we'll kind of clarify why, why that won't work exactly. OK. So the point here is this light over here um, is, well, uh, the point is it, it wants to uh, pay attention to all the pits, basically. Um, but when it looks at the light here, so here's the basic problem. This spot over here is going to represent partially the light from pit one and partially the light from pit two. And they're going to be entangled in a way that the DVD player cannot untangle at that point. Um, so uh, it can't just ignore this spot because this is the light from pit two. It wants to know about pit two. Okay. So each spot has a little bit of all of them. That's right. Roughly speaking. Roughly speaking, each of the pits is creating a whole spectrum of spots. To make things simple, I've only been I've been saying these are all the spots from pit one. But I could draw a similar spectrum of spots from each of these pits. Mm -hmm. And that again makes it very hard for the DVD player to tell who is who. Okay. Again, we're just gonna go through the rough details here. It'll be enough to solve problems in this course. So let's see how the DVD player and manufacturers solve this problem. Now I'm just going to draw the first order bright spot from pit one. I'm just going to draw the first order bright spot from pit one. This is, remember, the, the bright spot that's closest to the center line. Here's the bright spot that's closest to the center line. And this is, again, coming from pit one. If the light was a particle, there would be no light here from pit one because it's a wave. It's spread out to here. <clears throat> All right, now, where do we need to put the light from pit two to make sure that it's not going to get confused, confused with this? Um, over here, well, the only place that we can really put it to make sure there's no confusion is, remember that between these two bright spots, there's one place where there's no light from pit one. Remember, that's the destructive interference. So here is the complete destructive interference. The dark spot from pit one. This is the first dark spot from pit one. There's a whole series of dark spots, but we're looking at the first dark spot from pit one. Well, if the light from pit two went right to here, then the player would know for sure which is which. And any place else is a problem. Because remember, all these other places have some light from pit one. The only place where there's no light from pit one is right here. So that's the one place we could put the light from pit two, and there wouldn't be any confusion. So we want pit two, we want its light to be headed towards here. This then tells us this is the closest we can put adjacent pits. The closest we can put adjacent pits is so that the light from one pit goes into the first dark spot for the other pit.
why would we want the pits to be close to each other? Well, remember, the pits are where we're storing the information. The more pits we can put on the disk, the more information it will hold. <coughs> so, you know, <coughs> obviously, uh, <coughs> obviously, we want a disk that will hold as much information as possible. Well, in order to hold as much information as possible, we have to crowd the pits as close to each other as possible. Um, but we can't crowd them closer than this. Because if the pit, if the other, if this pit was over here, its light would be over here and it would be mixing with the light from pit one. So this is the closest we can possibly put two pits so that the light from one goes into the first dark spot of the other. We could put them so that this light goes into the second dark spot, but then that, that would be putting them further apart than we need to. The closest is like this. Okay. Um, so that's the closest uh, that we can put these here. And that gives us the smallest possible theta. Remember that theta is this angle here, basically. The angle between the center line and the spot on the screen that you're looking at. And you can see that theta here basically also measures the angular distance between the two pits. 